the singular story of how Hattie Green became the richest woman of the Gilded Age, and the events surrounding her death, are fascinating. When Hetty passed away in 1916, she was arguably the wealthiest woman on the planet. Her innovative strategy of buying below fair value and selling above it, similar to the investment approach adopted by Warren Buffett, was one of the main factors that contributed to her enormous fortune. It is said that she accumulated her immense wealth through her extreme frugality and greed, which included wearing a single dress until it was nearly in tatters and only washing the dirty parts, as well as avoiding hot water and conserving energy by not heating her food. Although Hetty was a very austere and economical Quaker, perhaps her peculiar behavior can be attributed to the fact that she did not identify with the traditionally assigned role of women in her time. She rejected the idea of being merely a decorative ornament reserved for wealthy women and sought to challenge the social standards of the 19th century. Our tribute in this video will be dedicated to the extraordinary life of Hetty Green, a woman recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records as the richest woman before we continue with our deeper exploration. Remember to subscribe to our channel and enable notifications to stay updated with the latest updates. Number 1. Her family was the wealthiest in the richest city in North America. Henrietta Howland Robinson, also known as Hetty Green after her marriage, was born in New Bedford, Massachusetts, in 1834. She was the daughter of Edward Mode Robinson and Abby Howland, a prominent whaling family in the city. At that time, New Bedford was one of the world's leading whaling centers and had the highest per capita income in North America. The Getty family, descendants of Quakers, owned a large fleet of whaling ships and also conducted business with China. When Hetty was only two years old, she went to live with her maternal aunt, Sylvia, and her grandfather, Gideon Howland. Number two, while other girls her age played with dolls, she devoted herself to reading business documents. From childhood, Hetty showed interest in understanding her grandfather's business reports and tracking stock quotes, as well as learning about business based on Gideon's teachings. At the age of 10, she entered Eliza Wayne's boarding school in Sandwich, Massachusetts. After the death of Gideon Howland, her father, Edward Robinson, took over the leadership of the whaling company Isaac Howland, and Hetty became involved in business applying her father and grandfather's business practices. Since her mother had health issues and spent most of her time at home, Hetty was responsible for managing the family's finances and practical matters. Number 3. Her father, a skilled investor, instilled in her an interest in finance and investments. At the age of 13, Hetty began learning from her father about investments, balance sheet analysis, and the importance of buying assets at a discount. By the age of 14, Hetty had already invested $6,000 in railroad bonds. When her father passed away, Hetty became the heiress to a considerable fortune and took it upon herself to manage it. She invested a large portion of her inheritance in high-quality securities and kept her fortune secure even during financially turbulent periods. Number 4. She contested her aunt's will to gain more control over her inheritance, but the court ruled against her. Sylvia and Howland, Hetty's aunt, was one of the wealthiest women in the United States, and her fortune was mostly locked in trust funds. Hetty contested her aunt's will to obtain a larger share of the inheritance, but the court largely ruled in favor of the original will. This experience left a mark on Hetty and encouraged her to seek greater control over her own fortune. Number 5. She married Edward Green, a self-made millionaire, but faced marital problems. In 1864, Hetty married Edward Henry Green, a wealthy businessman who shared her interest in investments. However, the marriage faced difficulties over the years. Hetty and Edward had two children, but disagreements between them were constant. Hetty was inflexible when it came to financial matters and often disagreed with Edward's investment decisions. She even refused to share her fortune with him when he faced financial difficulties. 
Number 6. Her extreme frugality and greed contributed to her impressive wealth. Hattie was known for her extremely frugal lifestyle. She would wear a single dress until it was almost in tatters and only wash the dirty parts. Additionally, she avoided using hot water and did not heat her food to save energy. These habits of extreme thrift were one of the main reasons for her wealth accumulation. Hattie was also ruthless in negotiations, seeking to buy assets below fair value and sell them above it, ensuring significant profits in her investments. Number 7. She invested wisely and succeeded in business. Hattie was a skilled investor and found success in various areas, including real estate, railroads, mining, and bonds. She would buy shares of struggling companies and revitalize them through her efficient management. Moreover, she was one of the first women to invest on Wall Street, earning recognition and respect for her abilities. Her investment approach, similar to the strategy adopted by Warren Buffett, was instrumental in her wealth accumulation over the years. Number 8. She was a woman ahead of her time and challenged social norms. Hetty did not conform to the traditionally assigned role for women in her era. She challenged the social norms of the 19th century and sought financial independence and business success. Her determination and willingness to take risks made her a remarkable figure in a time when women were often underestimated and limited in their ambitions. Hetty paved the way for other entrepreneurial women and showed that women could be equally successful in business. Number 9. Hetty Green adopted an investment strategy based on buying stocks at low prices and selling them at higher prices. She explained her approach, saying, I buy when things are low and no one wants them. I keep them until they go up and people are crazy to get them. That is the secret of all successful business. Hetty used the income from the trust fund left by her father to invest in the same manner as him, acquiring Civil War bonds that offered high returns in gold. In her first year in England, her profits totaled $1.25 million and she had her best trading day, earning a gain of $200,000. Hetty stated, I believe in getting into the market when prices are low and out when they are high. I have a preference for buying railroad stocks or mortgage bonds when I see that something promising is being underrated because nobody wants them. I buy in large quantities and hold them in my portfolio. Number 10. During the 1907 financial crisis in the United States, she played a significant role by using her considerable fortune and influence to help stabilize the financial system and prevent a complete collapse. During the crisis of 1907, banks were facing a liquidity shortage, and there was a run on banks, which worsened the situation. In this context, Hattie Green stood out for her strong financial position and her reputation as an experienced investor. She was able to use her influence and resources to provide loans and financial support to struggling institutions. Hattie made significant loans to help stabilize various troubled financial institutions. Her involvement and commitment to providing capital were instrumental in restoring confidence in the financial markets during that critical period. Her actions contributed to avoiding a widespread collapse of the United States financial system and helped calm the crisis. While it is important to recognize Henny Green's contribution during the 1907 crisis, it is worth noting that other individuals, institutions, and government measures also played crucial roles in overcoming that financial crisis. Hetty Green's story is incredible and inspiring. She challenged the social norms of her time and became one of the wealthiest women of the Gilded Age. Her innovative investment strategy and extreme frugality were key to her immense fortune. If you were inspired by Hetty Green's story and would like to learn about more fascinating stories like this, be sure to subscribe to our channel. There, 
you will find engaging and informative content about historical figures, investment strategies, and much more. Join us and be part of this community of learning and discovery. Don't forget to enable notifications to stay updated with the latest updates. We look forward to having you with us.